So in this video, I'm going to go over the different lacerators that I have and why I don't think it's very effective running two lacerators at the same time. Shiva by far is my favorite lacerator because she's able to apply bleed off her rush and off her claws. Her active skill, uh, it's okay. Like regaining some HP is great in my opinion, but by turn six, you wanna hope the match is done or nearly done. So it is an okay skill to have, but it doesn't add much in my opinion. So something I did with Shiva's Claws that might be a little unpopular is that I gave her HP instead of a, a huge bonus to AP when attacking. And so the reason behind this is I need her to survive in order to apply laceration to a tune that's influenced by bleed or hemobleed. So I'm actually considering changing the attack to also defense because I don't want her to die and if I do that with her mod sorry with her weapon set I can change her mod set in order to be more effective in a raid. Now the next lacerator that I'm going to look at is Vegan Rick and he's right now in the league store. So I have mixed opinions on this Rick because he's kind of a jack of all trades but a master of none meaning he does a lot of different things but doesn't do any of them extremely well. So his rush deals 940 maim damage up to two enemies, and then those characters, characters get 325 bleed and 75% heal reduction for three turns. Then your whole team gets focus for one turn, which can be effective because focus is a great skill that lets you bypass, confuse, and taunt and go around guardian shields. Obviously, he's a lacerator, and in my opinion, this is one of the best features for him because uh, with the bleed burn meta going on, having a lacerating tune is very useful. And the lacerator tune that I really want is actually Martinez because he is a nice mix of control as well as having that bleeding capability and lacerate. So Rick's active skill is a focus and AP gain. So he ends up getting focus for two turns and gains plus 35% AP because every tune basically gains plus 35% AP when they're trying to add something to someone's active skill. It's a turn two active skill, which can be useful because again, you can bypass human shields, ignore taunt and confuse. So it makes him a more usable character in my opinion. The next part of Rick that we're going to take a look at is his weapon, which is a bound weapon as well. And it's pretty different. 30% attack, a medium bonus to AP when attacking, and confuse when being attacked. So this type of weapon only really works if you're running a laceration bleed team without a human shield. If you have a human shield, this weapon will almost never be used because your human shield should be taking in all the damage and debilitating status effects. So unless the opponent focuses and then chooses to attack Rick, because Rick doesn't have a taunting ability, well, this weapon isn't going to be very effective in my opinion. So you could change this to something like stun on attack, but with bound weapons that can be quite difficult. Now, the other bleed tune, lacerator tune, sorry, that I have at my disposal is Davy, and many of you can actually get him. He's in the five star tokens and he's been war a war wheel character before as well. So his rush is quite slow at 85 AP, but he deals two attacks of 350% damage to one enemy and 350 bleed damage for two turns up to three enemies. And I like his rush because it applies bleed to a variety of different enemies and bleed can stack. So it just gives you a lot of options if your goal is to bleed out the opponent. I remember back in the day, I used to run Davy with four star hemobleed Sarah and this was before mods even, and I found the team to be decently effective. I was taking out some very beefy teams, not necessarily at a fast rate, but I was taking out teams that I had no business taking out, in my opinion. Now, Davy's active skill is a bleed and AP gain active skill, so it deals 500 bleed damage for three turns to one enemy, and he ends up getting 30% AP, which is kind of different because in most cases, people are getting 35%. So 30% is a bit low. So I do like his active skill. 500 bleed damage is pretty effective in my opinion, especially when you're able to stack bleed. There's mods to help with bleeding and there's laceration, obviously. So between Davy's rush and his active skill, 
It's probably my favorite between all the other uh, Lacerator tunes I've talked about so far. Now, when we move on to Davy's weapon, he does have a bound weapon, so when being attacked, a better chance to cause 200 bleed damage for three turns up to two enemies. So again, this is like Rick's weapon where he needs to be attacked in order for this weapon to work. And as you see, I gave him HP and defense, kind of similar to what I want to do with my Shiva just because his job is to survive. I don't really need him rushing as much as just lacerating the bleed I'm already applying. Because if I lose my lacerator, then I'm not doubling the bleed anymore. And I find my bleed team is very ineffective at that point. So now I'm just going to go through some raids in order to show you the effectiveness of a lacerating tune. So this is my typical bleed team that I'm sure you've seen before. And as you see, like it's, it's effective at killing a tune every turn if applied right and if you can build the bleed enough and I think it's important to have bleed weapons but special ones so like Michelle's weapon has a chance of applying 400 bleed when she attacks but there's lots of weapons that you can craft that you know it's like 70 bleed which is almost none and I don't find that to be very effective but against teams like this so Roxy prevents you from using attack up boosts so that prevents you from like a Kate giving your, your team plus 50 attack. Now you can drop the defense of the opponent, but in the case of a bleed team, you kind of just bypass the defensive stat totally. So in this next match, I'm going to put Vegan Rick in, and I guess I'll take out my Cal, because I do like having Lily in there for Disarm Tune and Charlie for some good control. So I'm just going to add Rick here to show the difference with two lacerators and why I think it's less effective. So I'm just going to add some basic mods to him. I want him to survive, so I won't give him the highest bleed mod, but I will give him an HP set so that, his, again, his job is to lacerate. So a uh, very defensive mod set, so just in case whoever else I decide to use this team on. Ideally, I would want you know, defense versus um, blue or yellow based on the team that I'm trying this against, but I'll just leave it with a simple mod on it. So right here, as I attack, you'll notice I hesitate. So there's right now 2,088 bleed. As soon as Rick attacks, it's only 2,216 because Shiva already lacerated and doubled the bleed applied by Michelle, Charlie, and Lily, and the bleed that Rick added was only the bleed mod so because you can only lacerate the bleed on a single tune once per turn it makes it ineffective if you're trying to bleed out one specific tune on that turn because like shiva when she attacks she has a chance to give an additional amount of bleed based off her weapon so her claws but you can't lacerate that bleed on the same turn so you're just adding that flat amount of bleed. If you attack with Rick after, well, you're not doubling the bleed. You're just adding the 128 bleed. And if we think about the math behind it, in some cases, that 128 bleed is the difference between a tune dying and not dying. Because if Rick was not Rick, but another tune and it applied that 128 bleed to a tune, that would have been doubled to 256 bleed, which might have been the difference between a tune dying or not. So here in this case, you see Jesus didn't end up dying. I'm right now running a team with Lacerator Rick instead of Shiva. So it's okay in this case for Rick to be in the position he is in because he has that confused weapon and I don't run a human shield or a guardian tune. So I would run a guardian tune like Yellow Rick if I had him. But because I don't have him, I have to use what I have. And I feel like having another tune that's applying bleed to the enemy is more important than having a human shield or a guardian tune that does not fit the typical profile. Now, I'm running a double lacerator team again to show you some application to it, but the reason why I don't like it. So right here, I spread out the bleed and I'm able to lacerate two separate tunes on the first turn. But see, now Jesus didn't die. So now I have to use some extra attacks in order to kill him. And in some cases, you don't have that leniency in the battle. So in my opinion, it's important to stack the bleed on a single tune if your goal is to take out one specific tune on X specific turn. Now, 
Some people would say that burn is so much better because it spreads to other enemies. And as you see, I actually do have a burn mod, and I believe that's on my Shiva, because when a tune dies, that burn spreads to an adjacent tune, but burn does not stack. And I think the highest burn that I've seen, that, well, that I can think of right now, is Camilla, who does 900 burn to a single enemy. Now, with this bleed team that I have, if I could find a way, I wouldn't mind adding Naya to the team because she's a fire starter and would be very effective at spreading burn to the rest of the team in order to work in combination with bleed. So just going to go over Martinez really quickly. I love his rush. 58 AP, so it's fast. Deals two attacks of 250% damage and 600 bleed for five turns to a single enemy. And that enemy and up to one other gets 100% heal reduction for four turns. So this is a great way to bleed out a tune, even if they're a tune that has a vitality act, uh, specialist skill. Sorry, The active skill is also really good. A turn to confuse, which can confuse the enemy for three turns. So I find this to be very effective because not many people mod against confuse. Now, there are ways in order to focus your team. But on a turn two active skill, that's on the first turn basically of the opponent. They have to find a way in order to focus their team to avoid this active skill. And then of course, the reason we're focusing on Martinez, he's a lacerator. And with no bound weapon, you can use anything. There's that special weapon that is confused when being attacked. There's impair on attacking, absolute defense, 8% AP gain. The world is your oyster with Martinez. Anyway, thank you for watching and listening to my video.